No one would get pissed at you if you said that XCOM is one of the best PC or video games of all time. Whether you're talking about the original 1993 classic or the critically acclaimed 2012 update, XCOM holds a very special place in many gamers' hearts. XCOM is a strategy game, yes. It's important to manage your limited resources and put your soldiers in a position to take their best shots. But the game is scary too. The anticipation of seeking out alien threats hiding in dark alleyways or behind closed doors can get pretty nerve wracking. I'm on the move. Go loud! Today, we take a look at Level 7 Omega Protocol, a board game that tries to replicate the boots on the ground experience of XCOM. In Omega Protocol, up to five players work together as a team of well-armed commandos. They go on tactical missions in a secret government facility where things have gone horribly wrong and alien clones are lurking around every corner. Another player takes on the role of the Overseer, who controls the alien clone threat. The commandos win if they can complete their mission objectives, while the Overseer tries to make sure that doesn't happen. The commando players take turns moving around the modular maps, exploring new areas and shooting at little gray men. But every commando movement, shot, or action requires adrenaline, and the more they expend, the more of these tokens go to the Overseer, who, in turn, uses them to activate his own powers. Does Level 7 Omega Protocol do a good job of capturing the XCOM spirit? Let's see what our crew of reviewers thinks. We just got done playing another session of Level 7 Omega Protocol, and uh, you know we all are XCOM fans here, and we like this game because it reminds us of XCOM. But first, before we get started, let's see who amongst us cannot talk. Now, I'm kind of the host, so I'm not going to get gagged here. But I'm oh, gonna roll this. Oh, nice. You yeah. didn't tell us that. <laughs> I, I'm uh, like... immune. I have uh, diplomatic immunity. So I'm going to roll this die. Whoever, and then if it's one, two, three, four, five, six, you can't talk until the end of the show. And then uh, I'll explain this part next. Oh, Sean, oh, baby. Right no. off the bat. Right off the bat. So roll this 20 sided die, and we'll explain what this means. Oh, okay. No. So here we go 20 sided die. I, I, I do very expressive gestures, so I don't think this is going to hurt the show that much, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I think you are the best fan. All right, strong number. So you team. cannot talk until the end of the show when we do our conclusions, but you get 13 Aww. words to express yourself at the end. Okay. This will save us a lot of camera time. It's going to be like, so. dong, That's dong, true. Dong. Right. Oh, that's 12 dongs and a couple adjectives. <laughs> Let's spend a few minutes talking about what we liked about this game. So, yeah. Anna, do you want to go first? Yeah, so so one thing that I liked about this game that's, that's kind of interesting is like we all, I think, a lot of us anyway, uh, when we play XCOM, we give, I know I do, I give names to all the characters that are based on my friends, and some of you guys have been in my games. Yeah, and so in, in the last XCOM, you were on my team. You're in my squad. Did and I then, survive? Uh, yeah, well, I, I would feel bad when you didn't, and I'd reset the game. Right, so so that's the thing about this game, is that now you, literally your friends mm -hmm. are your operatives. And so you have to actually be kind of like, um, this is like something that you guys brought up before, where Brie was like, um, about, she, you were down, yeah. Yeah, and they actually down. like went, like you were like, no, leave me, leave me, leave yeah. me. Yeah, I was trying to be sacrificial. Uh, yeah, because like the mission to... we were playing was the first one in yeah. the game. Uh, so this game comes with nine missions, and then the, it's, a, it's one long overarching story. And in that first mission, we had to go in, find the, the room intel. that had intel. We didn't know which room it was, and then uh, we found the room, grabbed the intel, mm -hmm. and we're almost out. <laughs> and then you felt you were I, down. Yeah, he was attacking me because my character was like immune to all environment stuff. So like he had put all this like gas bombs and all this stuff around, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna get this stuff and I'm gonna run out of here. And he just got all of these like bad guys around me, all these sectoids. Yeah, so like, Sean Beeble oh, was the overseer. He was trying <laughs> yeah. to take you down, and he just needs to make sure the intel didn't yeah. leave the facility. But we we're like. And we didn't need you, yeah. Technically, to technically, win the mission, yeah. yeah. You just need the intel, yeah. yeah. So we we're like, you were just like, just leave with the mission, just leave <laughs> yeah. with the intel. We can win, but be, like to your point, it's like, well, she's our friend. We can't leave her. Exactly. We gotta, so we were like sacrificed. We didn't sacrifice. We ended up so winning, but right. we were like risked everything to save her. And that's kind of like why I like these type of co-op games because you're working together as a team and that I just love those kind of games I don't like the games that are very backstabbing and you guys know like <laughs> it makes me very uncomfortable when I have to backstab and kill my friends she love did that say this. that his his uh, goal for this was not to make us have a good time I was I was playing the overseer <laughs> and I was explaining she actually said Anna you're 
My it's job true. is not is not for you to have a <laughs> it's, good time. It's not like you're playing Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons where the the game master is there to just make sure everyone else has a good time and they're, he's not out to kill them, right? Mm -hmm. In this game, the overseer is out to kill the other players. You're trying to make us as miserable as possible. <laughs> I was trying, and I was targeting you for a lot. You, you were. Had, I have you four, kept four, four damage. Thank God for yeah. it healed me. So uh, what I like about this game, why it reminds me of XCOM, is like that whole mystery of opening a door. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on because in the board game, you, you, you open these doors, you don't know what's there, and then you flip over these cards and you reveal, all right, there's like uh, an explosion that happened in the room or a cave-in or these monsters yeah. spawn. So the, the mm -hmm. same kind of sense of like dread, like I don't know what's behind the door and you're kind of afraid to open it that you get from XCOM is also present in this game. Plus like the tactical battle, like moving one square at a time, trying to take cover, yeah. discovering aliens. Um, but also like the best part of this game to me is the overseer where you get this dashboard of all these different powers and it changes mission to mission. And anytime you guys act, you guys have to spend adrenaline yeah. to uh, do your actions and the more adrenaline you spend, the more actions I get as the overseer. Mm -hmm. And then so the more powerful I become. So that's pretty cool. I like how that is comparable to XCOM 2. Like XCOM has the time units when you mm -hmm. first play and you have like all these time units to spend to move, to attack, all this kind of stuff. But like this is what we're doing with adrenaline. And it's like what we use hinders what you do or helps you depending on what we have as our like kits. Because I had a few kits that kind of screwed you over with a few things. And I don't know, I just really love how that stuff plays into effect because it just manipulates the whole game itself. And mm -hmm. I love how that's comparable. All right, let's move on to what we didn't like about this game. Like, uh, and I'll, let me start first by saying, like, th the whole, how this game explains in the rules, like line of sight and movement and whether so you can see somebody or not is a little bit more detailed than I think it should be for a board game. And I actually, I know you like it. Like, I, I you like tactical board games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, and I just feel like there's games like uh, Descent or Star Wars Imperial Assault board games where they just kind of simplify, like, can you see the character or not? You know, do you have line of sight to be able to shoot this thing? They make it a little bit easier in games like that. So I feel like uh, I would love to simplify that part of it, but that's probably my only nitpick. Plus, setup time takes a while because mm -hmm. you got to set up all these modular pieces for each mission, put all these different things on the board. Uh, you have different uh, dashboard abilities and all of that stuff. So, um, but that's my only complaint. One thing that I really miss from playing like an actual video game version is for it to tell you exactly where you know where are the legal moves yeah. and like because it feels like i inadvertently cheat or something like that remember you forgot the rule where you can spend you can spend resources like you, you only need to spend it once to attack and move yeah like yeah. there's things like that that can be automated for you that the like just the board game version you really have to keep track of uh what's legal and not um and those are not necessarily the fun parts of the game now let's just summarize our thoughts and this is a chance for you to talk. What are your, what was it, 12 words? <laughs> uh, All right. 15? 15, 13, 13, 13, 13. words, okay. <clears throat> He's gonna really milk this. <laughs> this is like 30% as good as XCOM and that's fucking sweet. All right. <laughs> good job, good job. Thanks. Can I talk now or am I still gagged? I, I guess you can talk. Okay, sweet. I could totally use another beer. <laughs> Thank, that, thanks. I think that was really... Camera. I think that was just an excuse to keep it quiet for uh -huh. the show. So, uh, any final thoughts from you? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it is really one of my top games. I just like the whole balance of it all. And just, I think it's super fun with the missions, and I hope they expand it and do more expansions on the Moki Protocol itself. So. Oh, yeah, I wanted to say, like, that is really, really cool that there's kind of an ongoing story. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, like we haven't even played all the missions yet, but we all already know we like the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely like it. Um, like, so if we're to vote, if we're going to give it a platinum award, I'm going to say, uh, which means it's like, you know, top of the line, best, one of the best games ever. I'm going to just say, I'm not going to quite vote for that because it's, it falls a little short just due to, I think, for a lot of people, like the whole line, the way they do line of sight and if you're at the shorted distance and where, where you can move is a little bit too fiddly for me. So I'm not going to vote to give it a, a platinum award. What do you think? Oh, man. Um... I'll get back to you. Yeah, you think? let me think about this. First. I don't want to vote for Platinum only because this is like the first show and I don't want to set the bar like a certain so length. High. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
And also, there's little things that could be fixed. We were talking about the miniatures earlier, how it's hard to determine where the arrow is, and it's the just in there, right. like a little erratic over here. Uh, yeah, like Sean, but, maybe like some of these aliens yeah. in uh, 69. But, That's I mean, how they do it in space. For people that really like miniatures and games, like this wouldn't be something that they prefer. So, I mean, there's little faults to it. So, I mean, like, while I really like the game, I wouldn't give it a platinum. That's kind of how about you, Sean, maybe? Uh, XCOM's in my top five games of all time. And maybe this is nostalgia speaking, but this is a lot like it. Uh, I think the game is great in a strategic and tactical sense. I think the miniatures are fun. Uh, I love the dynamic of everything you do goes to the overseer, and the overseer can kind of know what everybody's up to because uh, this is science fact. The space monsters, they got mind powers. So they can like <laughs> read your mind. They see what you're doing, they know what you're doing, yeah. they can counter your shit. Because that's their thing. I love that that makes a kind of like a narrative sense, but it's also like this way where you can see like how uh, how much sportsmanship your friends have. Like, yeah. are they are they really dicking you over this space monster guy? I love this game. <laughs> platinum. For platinum me. for you. Okay. How about you, Anna? There are very few games I would give a platinum award to. Um, even my favorite game of all time, I would have to really think about it. Oh, you're going to be one of those reviewers. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's so, the kind of reviewer so it gets, I'm going to be. It gets <laughs> one vote for Platinum. Uh, it has to be unanimous for us to give it okay. uh, a Platinum Award. But I do think this is a very, very good game, though. Yeah, yeah and I if think you, we all agree. If so you're a gold a fan award. Of a gold, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Easy. Okay. All right. Well, that gold. wraps it up. Gold. I'll give it a gold. Definitely gold. 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 Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> now, let's get you reading some reader mail. Oh, I'm in. Hi, I'm TV Sean Baby from the internet. Will H writes, what is your favorite large group game and why is it Ultimate Werewolf? Will H is actually incorrect. The best uh, large group game is Telestrations, which is the game where you draw a picture, hand it to your friend, they guess what that picture is, that next friend draws what that guess was, and etc. And then you get around and then you find out which of your friends uh, are obsessed with drawing dicks. Ultimate Werewolf is a great group game uh, for finding out which of your friends are good at lying and stupid. Jesse H writes, what do you recommend as a good gateway game for the sort of player who would even balk at the complex rules of a game like Catan? If you have friends that are having trouble with the rules of uh, Settlers of Catan, that's fine. Uh, some of my friends are also stupid. I would suggest a a hobby the two of you could share together in a different way, like uh, like church or soccer. Tom H writes, my wife and I would like to play more tabletop games together, but our time is limited. We have a baby. Is there a game for two players that doesn't take more than 45 minutes to play? All right, we I have a real, real answer for this one. Shadowrun Crossfire is where it's at. The, the game is bullshit, you'll die almost instantly, but it takes like 30 seconds to set up. So, so who cares? You just, you die, you reset it, you move on with your life, the baby's screaming, so what, we're, we're, you're fine. Real answer. Sorry for fucking around on all the others, and thank you for your question. 